Feastcon 2020, in the beginning. When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And you know what? The Gospel of John says that brings us back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And then he says the word was made flesh. And then he talks about Jesus. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding, opening your eyes that God, the one who created all this, and the Jesus who is the word made flesh, they've not stopped creating new things. God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. Hey, we're going to have brand new workshops and brand new classes and fellowships. God's going to speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning. We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. 
we're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story, we're going to sit at the Master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain. Longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I'll leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me, disturb me, shake me to my core. Make me.
BeastCon 2020, in the beginning. When God created the world, there was nothing. And then he spoke the word, let there be light. And you know what? The Gospel of John says that, brings us back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. And then he says the word was made flesh. And then he talks about Jesus. And so today, if you feel that your life is stuck in the past, if you feel that you're there trapped in the old, I want you to start understanding, opening your eyes that God, the one who created all this, and that Jesus, who is the Word made flesh, they've not stopped creating new things. God is birthing something new in your life. And that is what Feast Conference 2020 is all about. Hey, we're gonna have brand new workshops and brand new classes and fellowships. God's gonna speak to you and He will do something new in your life. I want you to be there. I want you to bring your friends. I want you to bring your family. And I want you to bring, yes, a faith that says God's going to do something new. Feast Conference 2020 in the beginning. We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a, a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story, we're going to sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're going to start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. I am desperate for anything to ease the burden, for something new to give me anything that's certain, longing for a change, looking for escape, searching for a reason not to stay the same. But in your hands I remain. I choose to heed your call. I'll leave it up to you. You who see my rise and fall. So cleanse me. Disturb me. Shake me to my core. Make me.
Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Today is the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our presider is Father Steve Zabala. Let us begin our celebration. <laughs> We are gathered here in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ, Christ have of mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord of mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan, if ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with a sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. For this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior. You who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit, so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please rise to honor the Holy Gospel. loves me will keep my word says the lord and my father will love him and we will come to him The Lord be with you. And with and your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening. <clears throat> so in today's Gospel passage, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees got together and posed Jesus this question, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He answered, of course, that Jesus answered, of course, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It's the greatest in the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, um, we ask this question. So this, there are two commandments that Jesus summarized, love of God and love of neighbor. The question is, did Jesus say something new? Jesus, was Jesus saying something original here? If you look at it closely, if you read in the Old Testament, the two commandments are actually not original statements from the Lord Jesus, because these are already written and mentioned in the Old Testament. So Jesus is talking about love of God and love of neighbor, but if you check, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, it says there, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strengths. And Jesus talks about love your neighbors yourself. But if you take Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, it says there, You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people. And listen carefully but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So if you look at it, when Jesus says the first thing is love of God and the second one is uh, love your neighbor as yourself, these are not original statements from the Lord Jesus. But here's the thing. What is original with Jesus is that he made, he made these two commandments love of God and love of neighbor inseparable he made it inseparable like two sides of the same coin notice that after Jesus answered you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart etc he immediately followed it up with and you shall love your neighbor as yourself he did not stop with love of God but proceeded on to love of neighbor Therefore, love of God must flow into love of neighbor, and our love of neighbor must flow back into love of God. Now, 
in this gospel passage, sino ba yung audience ni Jesus? Who is his audience? Jesus addresses this statement to the Pharisees and scribes, which I guess is the appropriate audience for this statement from the Lord Jesus. As you see, the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees, and the religious leaders, they are remarkable with their love for God. Very remarkable, very pious. This is seen by their obedience to the law down to the smallest detail. They pay their tithes. They give offerings to the temple. They visit and sit in front seats of the synagogue for worship. They fast. In fact, ang requirement niya ata parang uh, once a month lang or once a week. Uh, they're doing it twice, no? More than more than more more, more than uh, more, more than the required frequency. They give alms. They pray even when the when their windows open for people to see. They obey the Sabbath law to the letter. They're very good in that component, love of God, but. They are very poor in the love of neighbor departments. This is what Jesus wants to remind them about and very critical about it. They are forgetful of the importance of people, the dignity of people, and the needs of people. That's why one time Jesus tells them, it is mercy I desire, not sacrifice. You always frequent the temple to make a sacrifice, to make an offering, but you're forgetful of showing mercy to people, especially those who are most in need. One clear example. If you visit chapter 5 of John's Gospel, this is a story of a crippled man for 38 years whom Jesus healed. He healed that man crippled for 38 years. He said to him, when he saw him, rise up, take up your mat and walk. And immediately he rose up and he walked. He was healed immediately. The man was healed, but here's the problem. The man was healed on the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, it's a day of rest. And even healing should take a rest. Jesus should not be working on the Sabbath. When the Pharisees uh, 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 saw the man, uh, what, what, the, the, when the religious leaders saw the man already walking, already healed, look at their statement. Look how they talked to the guy. They said to him, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. And that guy has been on the street for 38 years, waiting for an opportunity to be healed. And now that he is healed, the first thing that the Pharisees, the, the religious leaders tell, tell him is, it is not lawful for you to carry your mat. Parang sinasabi, illegal yung paggaling mo ngayon. Hindi ka dapat magaling ngayon. Oh? So you can see, these Pharisees, these religious leaders, they're very good with the love of God department. But their love for neighbor, they are very, very poor. It was like saying, it is not lawful for the man to get well on a Sabbath. The Pharisees were not able to see the good news that happened to the man crippled for 38 years now that he is healed. Mahalaga sa mga pariseyo ang Sabbath upang ito ilaan na panahon para sa Diyos. Pero nakalimutan nila na mahalaga rin ang kapakanan, ang ginhawa at ikabubuti ng tao like this crippled man. For 38 years, mahalaga ang pagmamahal sa tao. The Lord is important in our life, yes, but we should also see Him in people by respecting and upholding their dignity as human beings because God loves them all. You know, the person that I remember the most who's able to combine these two commandments, love of God and love of neighbor, is Mother Teresa, Saint Mother Teresa. A young sister, this story goes like this, a young sister of her congregation was beginning her first day in the hospital ward. She was very nervous and couldn't start at her, uh, her pastoral visits to the sick. 
she could see people dying on their beds. She saw other sisters moving from bed to bed, pouring water here, giving a kind word there, touching hands and giving medicine. She felt so tentative approaching the dying patients and the sick. And then suddenly the story goes, Mother Teresa came to her and said, smiling, Sister Anna, come with me, come with me. I want you to meet someone. And the young sister followed Mother Teresa. Soon they arrived at a bed in the far corner of the wards. On the bed lay a human skeleton, still alive, pero kalansay ng itsura. His eyes were sunk deep into his head. His hair was gone, and he had only one tooth in his mouth. The Mother Teresa took the old man's face in her two hands and knelt down by the bed. And she said to the young sister, Sister Anna, I want you to meet Jesus. I want you to meet Jesus. Now, there's a story of Father Revelo, our professor in theology. He said at one time, there was this journalist who visited Mother Teresa. And then the journalist saw Mother Teresa praying uh, at the chapel before the Blessed Sacrament. And the journalist could see the face of Mother Teresa looking at the Blessed Sacrament with so much devotion, so much love to the presence of Jesus there at the altar. And that face is a face of a person who is very much in love with God. Perito sabi ni Father Rebolo, that journalist also said, he saw Mother Teresa the day before, and a few hours before uh, uh, she, she, she went to the chapel to pray, he, she, he saw Mother Teresa visiting the sick, attending to the sick people and dying people. At ito sabi ng uh, journalist, that loving face that he saw in the chapel of Mother Teresa is the same loving face that he saw when Mother Teresa was attending to the sick. You see? It's the same intensity of love. Her love for the Lord is the same intensity of the love that Mother Teresa is showing to the sick. Mother Teresa dedicated her entire religious life as a sister to the poor, the sick, and the dying, because she believed that in doing so, she was demonstrating both her love for God and her love for neighbor. Our love for God must be humanized, and our love for neighbor must be divinized. Love of God and love of neighbor should flow into each other. Indeed, the love of God cannot be separated from the love of neighbor. Ask ourselves, how well have you translated your love for God to love of other people. Amen. We all rise to profess our faith all together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our gospel teaches us the greatest commandments of love. Let us pray to the Heavenly Father that we may love Him with all our heart, soul, and mind, and love our neighbors as ourselves. With confidence we pray, Father of love, hear our prayer. Father of love, hear our prayer. That church leaders may become instrument of hope to, to, for all people as they zealously and faithfully live out the gospel value of mercy and compassion in the world embattled with selfishness and the absence of love, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. That our government officials, particularly those working in the police and judicial system, may consider prisons and jails as sites for rehabilitation and restoration of broken relationships rather than places of punishment and violence, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. That as we celebrate Prison Awareness Sunday, we may give hope to the prisoners and attend to their needs by providing them nutritive food and sufficient and efficient medication, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. That those victims of injustice, terrorism, and crime receive proper care and support from the government and social workers so that they too may obtain healing and justice, we pray. Father of Father love, love, hear God our prayer. prayer. That the sick, especially those who are suffering from grave illnesses and the dying of this day, may be comforted by the loving embrace of God's peace, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. For all of us, that as stewards, may we always remember that we are all brothers and sisters, each a part of a community bound together by love and compassionate action, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. Through the intercession of our Holy Mother Mary, may the world be protected from further spread of COVID-19, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. May we shun the death penalty and push for a more efficient police force and judiciary, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. May those in power not abuse the anti-terrorism law, to suppress legitimate dissent and opposition, we pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father of love, hear our prayer. Loving Father, fill us with your spirit of love so that we may be able to give witness to our faith and fulfill your law of love through Christ our Lord. Amen.
understand. Pray, sisters and brothers, and may sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that the people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church and so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you and with joy we proclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of a holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts you pray, descending down your spirits upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins to this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and as our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit <clears throat> to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. <clears throat> through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ and to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but at the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And I'll offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. May Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacraments. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen the body of Christ. Amen. During communion, we shall proceed row by row. Form a line on designated communion aisles, stepping on markings on the floor to observe physical distancing. Receive Holy Communion silently by hand. Please be careful not to touch the hand of the priest or minister during communion. Please be careful in handling the sacred host, mindful of the face mask and face shield you are wearing. After communion, go back to your pew using the aisle on your right or your left. Speed. 
As we pray the Oratio Imperata. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Let us pray. Please stand. <clears throat> May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them. 
that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some parish announcements. You may drop your love offerings at designated boxes after the Mass. You may also make online love offerings through GCash by scanning the QR code on screen and post it also on the pews. Or you may deposit to CTK PS Bank account flashed on the screen. Our weekday mass goers may now access the contact tracing form online via QR code or the direct link posted on the screen for contact-free submission of the form. Manual forms, however, are still available. You may also refer to the posters near the entrance. For our own protection, everyone is encouraged to answer the contact tracing form honestly. For ease of online transactions when in the main church, you may connect to CTK free Wi-Fi. Effective October 31, CTK will be expanding to its maximum seating capacity of 196 people in all public masses following six feet physical distancing. Per IATF guidelines, CTK crypts will be closed on October 29 to November 4. CTK crypts are open daily at 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on allowed dates. Safety health protocols for everyone's safety will be implemented. We shall hold Triduum Masses for our dear departed on October 31, November 1 and 2, 10 a.m. here at the main church. October 31 and November 2, both weekday masses, will be on first-come, first-served basis, while November 1, being a Sunday, will require online seat reservation. To reserve a seat, please go to churchseatingbooking.com. Enrollment of names of your dear departed whom you wish to be prayed for in said Triduo Masses will be until 12 noon of October 30. To enroll online, please go to the link flashed on the screen. Or you may also write the names on the envelope provided at the church and drop them in designated boxes. Due to the volume of names enrolled, names will be flashed at least 30 minutes before our Triduo Masses. They will also be prayed for and blessed in our public online masses from November 1 until November 9. Everyone is invited to the CTK Life in the Spirit Prayer Community Zoom Worship and Community Intercession on Monday, October 26 at 7 p.m. Please refer to screen for Zoom ID. The culmination of the October month of Rosary on October 30, 5 p.m., Main Church with our CTK clergy leading us in praying the Holy Rosary. This will be followed by the solemn Eucharistic celebration of the anniversary of the dedication of our church, Christ the King Parish, at 6 p.m. End of announcements. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is over. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining our Mass. Good evening, everybody. Hi everybody, welcome to Feast at Home. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, you are welcome. And thank you for joining us on this broadcast. We, we are going to continue our series on miracles. What miracle did you receive today? 
What miracle did you receive this week? And we will talk more about the book, The Gospel According to Matthew. And it's going to be awesome. But before we jump into God's Word, I just want to um, welcome everyone who's here for the first time. If you're attending the feast at home, joining us for the first time, I ask you to just type it in the chat box. I am new. This is my first time so that we can connect with you. And uh, if you're a long time uh, attendee and joining us every week, I need you to be active because this is not a one-way thing. That's wonderful. That's a wonderful thing about, about um, going online is because it is interactive and it must be interactive. So I'm going to ask you to just type whatever. If you have a comment, if you say, amen, just do that. Okay. Now, I'm also going to ask you to be active and to just um, say hello to one another. I want the chat room. I want the chat room to just be filled with responses. All right filled with replies, filled with comments, and I'm going to need you to do that today, okay? Before we, again, jump into uh, the God's, God's Word, the, 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 the preaching of God's Word, I'm going to invite everyone and exhort everyone to continue to pray to God and wonder and, 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 and then um, decide how much God wants you to give. We get to that part where we exhort everyone to continue the cycle of generosity we are in the pandemic we are going through a lot of us are going through financial struggles but it's not the amount that we give it's the act of giving generosity is not who we are it, it, it's it's not what we do it's who we are so i'm gonna i'm gonna exhort you to just think and pray to god how much he wants you to give god wants you to give and he wants you to be generous he wants you to to take part and to always give every time there's worship what do we have what do you have in your hands are you willing to give it to god so i'm gonna ask you to just pray and uh, we will have uh, we have a lot of uh, ways how you can give you can do bank transfers and you will see the info there okay there you go info on bank transfers you can give via Gcash. You can see the QR code or, um, or, or the, uh, the account number. And um, my point is there's always an opportunity and you always have something to give. So, so um, if you want to partner with us so that the Word of God can continue, we can continue our work here in the district, Feast Makati District, I invite you to give. I invite you to give so that we... Um, we will be able to continue what we're doing and we will extend and reach the unchurched okay so pray to god and then um, after giving if you have given already if it's not too much to ask i will i i i ask you to send us a copy of uh, the transaction so that we know who to thank and we can account it properly okay again we want to be um, responsible we want to be uh, open about uh, what you give and we want to be careful and we want we value that and we want to be responsible for your offering okay so please do that okay um, I just want to announce some things if uh, if you've enjoyed the feast uh, the weekend feast um, today I invite you to invite your friends to go and check out our weeknight feasts every Tuesday and Thursday. Of course, Top Relova and Jan Silan will be there with you. I also invite you to be part of light groups. Light groups are, um, this is where we do life together. This is where we um, grow with one another. So light, light, light groups, um, we do life together. Li our light groups are our life groups, okay? And um, we also invite you to, 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 to uh, learn more about God's Word. Hunger Club, every Monday with Risa Sings on Kaoping. Um, you can check that out on the Feast Makati district page. And um, yeah, that will be awesome. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. We also invite you to uh, tune in to Gratitude Club. It's every second and fourth Wednesdays. It's also led, it's, it's led by uh, Brother Torrelova. Being grateful, it's an attitude. And I encourage you 
to continue to be grateful to God because when you become grateful, you begin to see even the littlest of blessings, okay? And our kids ministry, awesome kids ministry, following Jesus is not just for adults. Following Jesus is also for kids. So we invite you to take part of the awesome kids ministry. All information is is blasted all over this place. You see, you can see. You can join the gathering on Saturday afternoons or Sunday Sunday afternoons. Of course, our awesome kids ministry. Okay? So if you're ready, I want you to lean into God's word. And I want you to get blessed because God's word is going to be preached by your builder and your friend, my friend, Brother Eb Magtuba. And, uh, you know, I want you to just be excited for that. Okay, let's worship the Lord and then let's dive into God's Word. Yeah. <laughs> 
Amen, amen, hallelujah! Welcome to Feast at Home of Makati District in the cities of Mandaluyong, Makati and Tagig. I'm Brother Eb Magtuba. Welcome to our powerful talk for today, Make Me New. If today, my friend, you feel that, that you're far away from God and you have heavy burdens in your heart, you, this is, you're in the right screen. You're in the right screen. Why? Because today God will lighten up your load and He will embrace you. He will invite you to His own family and He will make you a friend. Before we start, I want to share with you this story. Sabi ng isang mister sa, sa misis niya, Honey, bakit ganyan pa rin yung balat mo? Di ba binili na kita ng Nivea milk? Sabi ng misis niya, Oh, ewan ko ba, honey? Umiinom naman ako araw-araw. <laughs> Are you ready to be blessed? If you're ready, let's pray our favorite prayer here in the feast. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, just raise your hands in the screen and let's sing together, Thy Word, O God. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Welcome to the feast. Welcome to our talk number six, uh, Make Me New. Our journey through Matthew was mind-blowing. Why? Because we started with Matthew last December 2019. Yes, December 2019. Ten months later, we're still in Matthew chapter 9. And we have 19 more chapters to go. But this is how dense and deep and powerful God's word. Matthew was a brilliant writer. Yes, and every Art is engineered to say what he wanted to say. And let me prove it to you. After the Sermon of the Mount, uh, he shared nine miracle stories. Yeah. And we already have taken the first six stories. Number one, yung healing of the leper. Number two is yung, if you remember, the healing of the centurion servant. And then number three, yung healing of Peter's mother-in-law. And then number four, calming of the storm. Remember that one? And then number five, the healing of two demon possessed possessed guys. And then number six is healing of the paralyzed man. But if you notice, the stories niya, in between this, these miracle stories, in between Matthew inserts two follow me stories. Oh, two follow me stories. Why? Because the purpose of these miracle stories is to follow the miracle worker. That's the point. We already read the first miracle story about the two guys who wanted to follow Jesus at their own conditions, under their own terms. Diba? Diba parang kwento din natin to. We want to follow God, but following our own rules. And here's an illustration. Uh, yung leper, yung centurion servant, and then yung sick mother in law. Y- yun yun, diba? And here's an illustration. The, the, the second. Let me go to and follow me story was the call of Matthew, which is our key passage for today. Yeah. And our one big message is Jesus wants you in his team. Jesus wants you in his team in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. Let's go there. If you have your own Bible, please go there in our NLT version. Let's read it together. Jesus calls Matthew. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 to 13. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guest. 
along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. But when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with such scum? Grabe, di ba? When Jesus heard this, he said, Listen to this, it's very important. Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not, uh, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Amen. Obviously, this story was extra special for Matthew. Why? Because this was his story of how Jesus changed his life forever. I can only, I can only imagine how, how he wrote these lines. Grabe, slow motion with, with smile in his face and with warm, alam yun, medyo warm pa yung chest niya. But by, by sharing this to us, Matthew was telling you and you and me that I was a bad boy. But Jesus made me part of his team. So don't disqualify yourself. If I, if I made it to, to his team, you will make it too. At this point, I want to lead you into prayer. Can you close your eyes and put your hands over your chest and say this after me? Lord Jesus, I call you to serve you. and your people. I thank you for inviting me to be part of your team with your power at work within me. I say yes to your plan for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, let's raise our hands to honor his word. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So before we start, let me have some announcements. If you're a first timer, we have a special gift for you. Okay, we have a special gift for you. Just type in the chat box, first timer, and someone will connect and give you that special gift. And if you want also to, to have someone, a group of safe people to journey with you, especially in these hard times, we have small groups. Okay, just put for a small group in the chat box. Someone will connect to you and invite you to join that weekly gathering of three, four, five people praying for you and more, most of the time listening to you. And if you have kids, now teach them how to know, teach them to obey God and know God. Um, let allow them to join our awesome kids ministry every Sunday and Saturday. In the screen, it's flashed. There's a Zoom ID you can join. Okay. And we have a weekend feast every Sunday and Saturday. We also have a, a weeknight feast every Tuesday and Thursday. Please do join there and every monday we have a, a bible study called hunger club every monday evening and every other wednesday we have a gratitude club where we put our gratitude we broadcast our gratitude um, um memories and and expressions so that blessings will be will be will be announced to the world that there's more blessings than tragedy no and it is it, it's led by our dear brother brother to rilova yeah. And we also have a uh, every other Sunday afternoon youth home, you know, youth home um, uh, live cast, you know, uh, broadcast about if you're a youth, please do join there. You know? And before we start, allow me to share this story. And what if one day, dahil sa trahedya, um, sabi ng doktor sayo, you need a new pair of legs or else hindi ka na makakalakad forever. So, nagpa-opera ka, and it become successful. At nung matapos nung operation, tinanong mo, uh, Doc, nurse, sino yung, sino bang may magandang, magandang loob na nagmalasakit sa akin at naging donor? So, may inabot na note ang, ang nurse sa'yo, ang sabi ng note, ingatan mo ang legs ko, ha? 
Sa'yo na yan. Love the goal. <laughs> no credentials, no problem. Jesus wants you in His team. Yes, let me share with you this crazy parable. Once upon a time, this was a city. There, there was a city that had only one hospital. Oh, oh, isa lang ang hospital nila. It look, it para yung hospital na yan, It looked like a five-star hospital. Parang five-star hotel ganyan. It was one of the most modern, most advanced, pinaka high-tech, most fully equipped hospital in the whole world. Pero ito ang mali sa hospital na yan. The doctors who owned it were rich and famous. And they only allowed their rich and famous friends to use it. And if you're, if you're not powerful and popular, they will turn you away. Oo, shushuy ka nila away. And one day, a great legendary doctor who came from, from other place decides to build a new hospital in that city. Pero etong hospital na ito will not be a, as classy like the other hospital. It will be very simple lang. But it was going to be a hospital uh, that, wel- that will welcome everyone, especially the poor. But the problem is all doctors in that city were already working in the first hospital. So yung legendary doctor na yun had to recruit a new batch of would-be doctors from scratch. So, nagpost siya sa Facebook. Anong sinabi niya? Wanted. New doctors, you will go through my own medical school. And he invites the most unlikely candidates like salespeople, BPO employee, teachers, engineers. <laughs> Ito pa mas shocking. This great doctor also invites people with shady char- characters like petty thieves, like scammers, and even corrupt politicians to be trained Uh, as his new team of doctors. And the doctor in the five-star hotel, uh, a five-star hospital, ridiculed him. Oo, oh, pinagtawanan siya. Sabi, magtayo ka na lang ng mental hospital at, at ikaw ang unang patient nito. Kasi yung pinaggagawa mo, baliw. And they also said, these people he, he is hiring don't have the qualities to become a very good doctors. But after a few years, These unqualified guys went through his own unique med school, which didn't only teach about medical stuff, but trained them to love. And soon, most of them got accredited, and together they built a new, a brand new hospital that served everyone, especially the poor. And obviously. This story was very unrealistic, but somehow this story as an analogy for our Bible story today. Yes, question, how did Jesus recruited his team? In ancient Israel, there was only one spiritual hospital. Merong isa lang, the holy temple in Jerusalem. Okay, it was run by priests called Sadducees, uh, who were very rich because They, that because they cooperated with the Romans. Okay? Kasi nasakop sila ng Romans before. So ginawa nila ito para to preserve their status and their wealth. And this and this priest enriched themselves. How? Because they they had a monopoly over the market stalls in the temple and the prices of the sacrificial animals went up to unreasonable prices. Kasi controlled nila monopoly and this temple because of its religious system, was not serving the majority of the people sa Israel. Uh, like lepers. Sino yon Yung mga, mga Samaritans, yung mga prostitutes, yung mga tax collectors, were not welcome. And Jesus walked into his, this terrible scene. So yun yung setup, yun yung scenario. And filled with overflowing love for those who were not being served. Majority of people was not being served and announced this this his coming kingdom which was going to be like a spiritual hospital and just like in my crazy analogy kanina crazy story instead of recruiting religious professionals such as bible scholars and bible professors preachers pastors and priests he recruited uneducated fishermen yes like 
Peter, like James, like John, and Andrew, and his most scandalous recruit, alam mo kung sino? With questionable character, si Matthew. Si Matthew. Matthew shared this conversion story, di ba? In Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Ano yung sinabi doon? Um, let's read. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Ano yung sinabi doon? Jesus was walking along. He saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciples, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. What happened here was beyond earth shaking. Yes, to show how controversial this is, take this test. Ito, for example, if you lived in ancient Israel, who would you want to be your next door neighbor? A Pharisee or a tax collector? Before you answer, let me describe them to you. Okay? Before ka sumagot. Pharisees were not bad people at all. Yes, I think they would be uh, quiet neighbors. Nice neighbors. Why? Because they were law-abiding. They're church-going and Bible teachers. They, 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 they prayed five times every single day. And you can be sure that they are quiet. <laughs> Except perhaps for worship songs that pinapakinggan sa Spotify ng asawa nila habang naglalaba. But aside from that, your religious neighbor won't disturb you. No loud parties. But the tax guy will be more disturbing. Alam ba yun? The worst characters in your village. The tax collectors was considered one of the worst sinners in Israel. And note that, that in any country, People generally dislike tax men, but in ancient Israel, iba ibang level. This was no ordinary dislike. G- Jews hated. The word is hated tax collectors to the core of their being. First, why? Why? First, it don't reasons. First, because many saw them as greedy, cheating bastards with no conscience. Let me let me fill you in a few historical details. Ito a Roman government. The Roman government didn't pay tax, uh, tax collector salary. Wala silang sweldo. Tax collectors were required a fixed amount of money. Okay? Mayroon siyang kota that, that they should turn over to the empire, to the Roman Empire. And whatever money they collect above that amount was theirs to keep. And you can imagine how, how much abuses happen. In, because of this arrangement, diba? And, but that, and that's why people hated them so much. Yes. And they made a fortune out of their neighbor's misfortune. Second reason is Jews were intensely nationalistic. That these tax collectors were traitors to their country. They were conspiring with the enemy. They represent... They represented the circus government that the Roman uh, Roman Empire installed upon them. So if your neighbor, if your next door neighbor was a tax guy, everybody, when you look over your fence, you will see Roman soldiers going in and out in sa bahay nila. And one early early morning, you you hear a commotion. For example, you you peek through your window and you see a guy with familiar face, kasi suki mo siya sa f- na sa pag sa tindahan ng fish okay fish seller siya and he is now in front of the tax collectors nakita mo uy si ano yun oh si Mang Badong yun oh taga benta ng isda and begging for mercy because he can't pay his taxes and the taxman ignores his message and and asks if if the fisherman can can sell something his land or his boat or his even his family and the guy falls to his knees and and Ask for more time. And your neighbor, the taxman neighbor, agrees but gives him a stern warning. And every night, you also have to struggle with taxman's loud parties. Oh, my party siya, gabi-gabi, with lots of drinking and cursing. And in those parties, makikita mo, you will see uncultured crowd, including prostitutes, pagans, idol worshippers, ganun. Ganun ang crowd ng taxman. Let me ask you again the question kanina. Who do you want to be your next door neighbor? The Pharisee or the taxman? 
I believe. Oh, sulat mo sa ta, sa sa ano, sa chat box. Honest, ha? honest. <laughs> I believe most of us will pick the Pharisee, the Pharisee, di ba? But would you know who Jesus picked? And not only as his next door neighbor, but part of his inner circle. Grabe, Jesus does something even more shocking. So you can imagine how everyone jaw drop when they saw Jesus recruit Matthew to join his team to 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 that will save the whole world. Diba? Friend, can I preach to you? God wants to change this world and he is forming a team. And Jesus wants you in his team. You may feel unworthy. You may, you may feel ungifted or unqualified, but he is picking you anyway. When I was in my 20s with, um, doesn't know anyone in Manila, with very poor communication and leadership skills, with habitual sins, with so many uh, business and personal failures, sobrang baba ng low self-esteem. Oh, diba? Baba talaga. <laughs> but Jesus, through my, through my leaders, saw something in me that I did not see in myself. Friend, Jesus sees something in you and He's inviting you to be part of His team. Jesus wants you in His team. The question is, will you respond to His call? And to continue this powerful message, help me welcome our beloved district builder, Brother Randy Borromeo. Brother Randy? Thank you. Thank you, Eb. We continue to uh, discover wonderful things about the call of Matthew, about his response, and about the message that Matthew is really trying to bring out there, the message that he's trying to convey to his readers. And uh, we continue to study about how Jesus did this, and we will continue to learn about how to do ministry, okay? Um, I'll continue now. You know, Matthew was called, and that was outrageous enough, and as if it's not enough, Okay, Jesus did something even more outrageous. This is crazy. He called someone, he called the sinner to be part of his team. But not just that. He, he just did not call. He answered the call of Matthew, the invitation of Matthew to eat in his house. Matthew chapter 9 verse 10. Let's read. Matthew 9, verse 10, it reads, Later, Matthew invited Jesus and his disciples um, to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and disreputable sinners. <laughs> That's crazy. Matthew hosted a party, and you know, we know that Birds of the same feather flock together. So when Matthew invited Jesus and Jesus went to that party, uh, I, I can imagine in the society pages during that time, Jesus eating, having a feast with sinners. I can just imagine. And that's crazy. Um, and, and I'm telling you, we can learn something from this, and we will learn it in a bit. Now, the, the, the reaction of the Pharisees, they were instant, okay? Jesus, Jesus said yes, because Jesus did not see Matthew as a sinner. Jesus saw Matthew as a transformed disciple, because Jesus knew that it is God's will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So when Jesus looks at us, when Jesus looks at you, he doesn't see the sinning me, the sinner in me. He sees the saint in you. He sees the saint that is in you. And Jesus never regarded Matthew as a project. Jesus saw Matthew as a transformed disciple of God. 
as transformed disciple and he spent time instead of condemning he connected instead of uh, of uh, judging he he gave them the benefit of the doubt again again jesus did that accepted them but acceptance I, let me just say acceptance is different from condoning and tolerating okay we accept sinners because we're all sinners but that doesn't mean that we agree with their way of life it's just that our message is that you don't need to be clean and pure before you can come to jesus but our message is come to jesus so that he can make you clean all right and when jesus answered uh, he did the call or attended the party the the reaction was instant okay the pharisees they 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 went berserk verse 11 but when the pharisees saw this they asked his disciples why does your teacher eat with such scum why does your teacher eat with such scum because the the, the, the Pharisees believed that God, who is a righteous God, is a just God, and they, they, they missed the fact that God is also a merciful God. Hmm? Some people believe that God is merciful, but he is just. You know what I think? You know what I think? I think that God is just, but he is also merciful. And, and that's what I want you to see, brothers, sisters, friends. Jesus spent time with sinners. Now, my question to you was, is when was the last time you were accused of hanging out with the wrong crowd? When was the last time you were accused of hanging out with the wrong crowd? I'm not, again, I'm not saying that we will do as they do, but we will be their friends because when we become friends with them, we have this small window of opportunity for us to reach in and tell them about the Jesus that we know. Tell them about the Jesus that we serve. But if you turn them, them away and judge them and condemn them, you lose that chance. You lose that opportunity. And, and what was Jesus' answer? After hearing the, the, the comment of the Pharisees in verse 12, Jesus said, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. <laughs> healthy people don't, don't need a doctor, sick people do. And, and I love this quote, okay? Uh, what Jesus was actually saying is that we, we have a wrong idea of church because church is not a museum of saints, but it's a hospital for sinners. And, and I'd, I'd restate that. The church is not an exclusive club for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. It's where you go when you're sick. That's why don't miss the chance to go to church. And that's what we're doing here at the feast. In fact, we're bringing the church to you. And thank God, thank the pandemic, we're able to be seen in every household right now, that suddenly the church that was closed, the physical church that was closed, has given birth to a lot of spiritual churches in every household. The church is not a museum, but it's a hospital for sinners. And that was Jesus' message. I came because I'm going to treat them. And like doctors do, like good doctors do, they go out and seek the sick those who need care, those who need to be touched, those who need to be cured. That's what Jesus does for you. And Pope Francis said the church is a field hospital after battle. Francis, Pope Francis was saying that we cannot stay here, but we should go out there. Pope Benedict said open the doors of the church not for people to come in, people and heal them 
in this hospital. Let this be a hospital, a field hospital after battle when people are wounded, when people are suffering. You know what, brothers and sisters? I know and I, have, I, I can feel this. That God is heartbroken that his church is not a field hospital. Instead of embracing sinners, we exclude them. That's very sad about church. That us Christians were more known for what we are against than what we are trying to share. We're, we're known more for, for us saying, don't do this, don't do that. Instead of us just loving like Christ loved. That's very, very sad. And, and brothers, sisters, friends, maybe, maybe you will ask, but so, so, so where did you get the template of the feast? How did you come up with this idea of the feast? Because at one point in the life of the Light of Jesus family, we said, let's open the doors, the doors of the feast. To all sinners. We are no respecter of persons. Doesn't matter who you are. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you've done. But you are welcome here. Because Jesus welcomes you here. And that's our template. The template of the feast. Is the feast that was hosted by Matthew. <laughs> feast that was hosted by Matthew. And that's our template. I'll continue verse 13. Now go and learn, Jesus said this, now go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy. Now Jesus went on the offensive, okay? After answering the Pharisees, telling the Pharisees that the, that the healthy people don't need a doctor, but the sick people do, he went on the offensive. He said, now go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy, not sacrifices. Now let that sink in for a while. I want you to show mercy, not sacrifices. Let it sink in. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. I have come not to call those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. We all are sinners. We all are sinners. And Jesus is saying, having mercy is more important than your sacrifices. Being merciful is more important than your sacrifices. Hosea, in chapter 6, verse 6, says, For I desire mercy. This is God speaking. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Sacrifice is good. But if all you do is sacrifice, if you do sacrifices, if you... If, if you give yourself your body to be burned at the stakes, but you don't have mercy, mercy equals love. If you don't have mercy, then, then I'm sorry. I'm sorry because God desires mercy, not sacrifice. Not sacrifice. How merciful are you? I'll continue verse 14 to 15. One day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, you know, they're still recovering from the trauma of hearing that Jesus dined with Matthew. One day, the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, why don't your disciples fast like we do? And the Pharisees do. <laughs> Talking about the party. Jesus, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. They, they were fast. They did not fast because they were having a party. And, and Jesus said, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with a groom? Of course not. But someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. Okay. Um, Jesus was showing the, the, his audience, okay, those who are following him, that there's a time for everything. There's a time to fast and there's a time to celebrate. And I, yeah, I, you heard me right. Celebrate. You know, Jesus, from the study in Scripture, from our study in Scripture, we know that Jesus liked to dine. Jesus liked to eat. <laughs> That's why sometimes I feel like I'm, G I'm like Jesus. <laughs> I love to eat. 
Jesus loved celebrations. And uh, listen to this. And I, and, and, and I pray that all, all your uh, wrong notion about the kingdom of God will be smashed into smithereens just about now. Listen to this. The kingdom of God will be marked by celebration. It will be marked by celebration. The church that has no room for celebration will have no room for prodigal sons. Because the world, I'm not saying that we will break into parties, party, party, party. But what I'm saying is that we should have the feasts of mercy to give the people who don't know Jesus to come and dine with us and let's befriend them so that they will have an opportunity to hear about what we, say, what we have to say about this Jesus that we serve. The church that has no room for celebration has no room for the prodigal sons. That's right. That's right. And I'll continue, 16, 17, and I'm going to end this in a while. Um, besides, who would put patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth. Old and the new can't go together, go together, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, when the old the, the when the wine expands, the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruining the skins. Then you don't get anything. New wine is stored in new wineskins so that both are preserved. I have news for you, brothers. Jesus is the new wine. Jesus is the new wine. And we need to change our hearts. Um, we will pray for that. Let our prayer be, change my heart, oh God. I want you to type in your, in your um, um, chat, chat boxes, um, change my heart, oh God. And we will do that. We will pray that the Lord will change our hearts because that's his promise in scripture. He said, I will turn your hearts of stones into hearts of flesh. Let that be our prayer. Yeah, I love that song. Change my heart, oh God. Make it ever new. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. Jesus is a new wine, and we need a new wine skin to put Jesus in. The old wine skin is our old way of looking at sinners, looking at people. Huh? Jesus showed us and taught us the gospel of love. It is better to love than to be right. It is mercy that Jesus desires, not sacrifice. We will sacrifice. We can sacrifice, and we do that. But if we do that without love, then we're just a noisy symbol, First Corinthians says. Okay? So we need to have new wineskins. Our hearts should be able to contain the new wine, which is Jesus, and so that that new wine will be able to extend into the way we do life, the way we live our lives, the way we look at people, the way we understand them, the way we love them, the way we try to listen to them. Jesus wants you on his team because the world at any, you know, more than any time in the world, the world is looking for people who will be like Jesus, for people who will love like Jesus. For people who will gather and tell them, tell the world about his love. I'm reminded of, of our feast lights. You know, this is revolutionary ever since we started the feast lights. Meaning you can, you can gather about two, three, up to ten of your friends and gather and let them. And you will talk about God's word and uh, you, will, you will maybe watch uh, a talk. Or, and, and listen and reflect on God's word and how it has hit you. Um, I'm reminded of a feast light that we have among jeepney drivers. And uh, the, here's a picture of them. Of course, they're still wearing masks. This, is, this has happened during a pandemic. But they gather. They gather to talk about God's word. They gather to talk about God's word. And these are people from all walks of life. And it's important that we know that loving them gives, gives us a chance
to minister to them. And we know that because we're ministering to them and we're loving them like Jesus loved them, uh, they will change. Jesus will change them because you know, you and I know that Jesus changed us. Jesus changed us. So it's only Jesus who will change them. Our role, your role, is to love them. Jesus will change them. And Jesus wants you on his team. And Jesus is saying, wake up, guys. It's urgent. And you need to. You need to do what you have to do right now. Because the world needs you. The world needs love. The world needs to hear my great love for them. Let me pray for you. And I'm going to invite you to enlist on Jesus' team. If you haven't made this decision yet, I invite you to first accept Jesus in your hearts. And then number two, pray that God will give you an opportunity to love, to be merciful, to reach out to those who need to hear his word. Let me pray for you. Put your hands over your chest. Father, we come before you today. I lift up to you all those who are watching us on live stream. All those who are watching us and joining us here in the feast. Father, I pray that in a very special way, you will just move in their lives. That you will just touch them, oh God. That you will just make it urgent. Make them see the urgency of enlisting in your team. Father, for those who, for those who have not accepted you as Savior and Lord, I ask you, oh God, to just come into their hearts. Those of you who want to do this right now, can you say this prayer after me? Jesus, thank you for dying for me on the cross. Thank you for the mercy. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. I am sorry for all my sins. And I ask, I invite you to come into my life, sit at the center of my heart, my life. Jesus, be my Lord, be my Savior from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you pray that prayer, I want to pray with you. I pray, pray for you. Father, I pray for those, everyone who said that prayer for the first time, everyone who made the decision to love you and to put you at the center of their lives. Father, I pray that you give them an opportunity to immediately be part of your army, army of people who love people, an army of people who understand, who are merciful, who will focus on mercy, who will love like you loved. And let this army grow. As in scripture you said, um, the smallest shall become a thousand, a thousand a mighty nation. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's continue. Continue to worship God. Let's continue to worship the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, as we come into worship, as we sing the song, we be reminded of your faithfulness and of your goodness, Jesus. But when problems are arising, when challenges are arising, we do not, when we do not understand anymore what's happening around us, you are faithful and you are God. In Matthew 9, there was a story of a woman who was bleeding for years. She's saying that if only she could touch the hem of, of the clothes of the hem of Jesus, that she will be healed. And true enough, when she touched the hem of Jesus' clothes, she was healed. You know what Jesus told her? That her faith has made her well. Today, brothers and sisters, let us be reminded to be brave, to have faith. That when Jesus told us, that our faith will make us well. We will continue to praise Him and to worship Him. His face shine upon you 
and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. Be upon you, and it's 